Hey y'all, how are you doing today? YouTube has torpedoed the academic institution and empowered the class clown. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, there used to be a morality tale that was taught to us. I grew up in the 80s and 90s and teachers would tell us this all the time. I remember two versions in particular. They all followed the same formula but just some minor details that were tweaked in each one. So the first one goes something like this. This was taught to me in the fourth grade by my teacher, my elementary school teacher, Mr. Green. Now, in this story, Mr. Green says that he had a student, let's call him John. John was a student and he was always fooling around, slacking off, never paid attention in class. And Mr. Green told him that it's so important to take school seriously, take your education seriously, but John would never listen. And John just goofed around. Fast forward however many years, and Mr. Green sees someone at his school, and it looks like John. And he goes, John, is that you? And John looks back and says, Mr. Green? and they recognize each other in that moment. And this was kind of a revelatory moment for both people because it resonated with each other. John had turned into a janitor. So the moral of the story is if you don't pay attention in class, you're going to end up like John. Obviously, I found this story problematic for many reasons. First of all, John actually shaped up. He got his act together. He got a job. Secondly, there's nothing wrong with getting into sanitary engineering. And um, if anything, you want to work for a school. You want to be part of an academic faculty. You want to work for the city, whether it's being a garbage truck driver or a um, janitor. You have a pension, you have a union. If anything, if you are getting into sanitary engineering, working for the city is considered cream of the crop. Uh, thirdly, there is a major plot hole in fiction writing. This is what you call a very convenient coincidence. What are the chances that the student that Mr. Green taught applied for the same school that Mr. Green teaches? It's a very slim to, to no chance that that happens in real life. But this is a story that Mr. Green would tell us, and obviously it was designed to strike fear in our hearts, in the hearts of children, because when you're a child, when you're that age, when you're in elementary school, you have big dreams. You have ambitions of becoming and growing into something larger than life. Anything short of becoming a Power Ranger or a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle or an NBA player, you're looking up to NBA players, athletes like Penny Hardaway, like Ultimate Warrior, for instance. Turning into a janitor is your worst nightmare. So this was supposed to be a cautionary tale. The second version of this story that I learned, that I recall, happened in the ninth grade, and it was taught to us by a guest speaker. Now, this story resonated even more it basically took it to the next level. It took it up a notch, kicked it up a notch. Because this time the story was told by a guest speaker and the guest speaker was the proverbial class clown. So this was the class clown manifested in the flesh. This was no longer a figment of someone's imagination. This was no longer a character that could conceivably be fiction. So here the class clown was telling us that he did not pay attention in class and he was just super popular. He had a great social life in high school and he fooled around, goofed around, he joked around, everybody laughed. He was the life of the party, he was the prom king, he was voted most likely to succeed and go into entertainment and so he had it made. He was the king of the hill until he graduated and only to realize that the same talents that he had, the same charisma, the same skills, the same social skills that he had no longer translated to the real world. 
And so he really regretted not taking advantage of the academic opportunity, not listening to his elders, not listening to the advice that was doled out to him by teachers. And so he was here to tell us that this led him to turn into a drug addict. And so he was abusing drugs, and at the same time, he would go around and give these motivational talks to students. And to the students, he would tell them, I'm off drugs now. I'm clean. I'm reformed. I've kicked my drug habit, my drug habit, but he was saying that in reality, he was still hooked on drugs. And yet here he was telling kids that he was clean. But he was telling us now that this time he's serious. He really is clean, that he has gotten over his drug addiction. Of course, we don't know. He may just as well have been still addicted to drugs at the time of him telling us this cautionary tale. But essentially, the moral of the story was you should not go out, you should not develop your social skills, you shouldn't goof around, you should just bury your nose in an academic textbook, and you should take school seriously because you only have a, a small window that you should not take for granted. And you should study hard, you should stay home, don't go out and party like he did, and just focus in class and listen to your teachers. And so obviously, we're thinking that this is great advice at the time. This is someone who has experienced life firsthand, and he's here to tell us this. It made sense at the time, and then for me, in my case, I went off to college, I got a degree, and it just did not really pay off for me. Because by the time I graduated, YouTube had torpedoed the academic institution and empowered the class clown. So having a liberal arts degree was worthless. And now you look at successful YouTubers like Casey Neistat, like Logan Paul, and Rice Gum. These are the class clown prototypes. Casey Neistat talks about it. He has covered it many times in his videos about how his teachers told him that he would amount to nothing. And yet here he is, more successful than anybody could have uh, dreamed. So I just wonder how school today is able to reach children because at least when I was growing up, I didn't have any genuine curiosity for learning. I was just forced to study hard for the grades so that I could go off to college. I could then trade in that degree for a great job with a decent income. So I'm genuinely curious how schools are able to reach children these days. How are they able to communicate the significance, the importance of education and academic achievement? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.